The endoscopist's view of the anatomy is simple, with prominent folds, the valves of Houston, sometimes skin papillae at the opening, and then the squamocolumnar junction or dentate line, which is seen here on inserting the endoscope. First squamous epithelium, then the junction, and inside that the columnar epithelium of the rectum. Retroverting the endoscope, the same thing can be seen. The rectum is the first 15 centimetres, and the cecum the dead end proximal to the ileocecal valve, which isn't always as obvious as this one. The distal colon is circular because of the thick circular muscles around it, whereas in outline the transverse colon is triangular. The liver, and occasionally the spleen, can be seen blue-grey through the thin proximal colon. The triangular shape of the transverse is due to the longitudinal muscles outside it, the tenae coli. Longitudinal indentation of a tenia, typically in a large colon, shows the direction to follow, like white lines on a road. Sometimes two tenae are visible. At acute bands in large colons, steer alongside the longitudinal fold, which may sometimes mean acute angulation of the scope. Haustral folds run transversely over the underlying muscle layer, but muscle fibres can also give a circular impression, or they can cause reflections in an arc, which gives the clue where to steer, even in close-up. The haustral folds and circular muscles can be thickened or hypertrophied in diverticular disease. Watching the surface highlights carefully, if there's not too much mucus, the endoscopist can glimpse the crypt or pit openings seen here on microscopy. About 30% of the mucosal cells are mucus secreting. The reflections may also show up in the innominate grooves in the mucosal surface, which are better seen after dye spray using 0.1% indigo carmine solution. Don't be misled into thinking that all mucosal elevations are polyps because there are also lymphoid follicles shown up here by melanosis from laxative taking. Lymphoid follicles are a normal finding, part of the mucosal defence mechanism, especially seen in young people, although they are enlarged in infective colitis or early Crohn's disease. The most obvious feature of the normal mucosa, the vessel pattern, is in fact submucosal, because the surface epithelium is transparent. The surface is around 50 cells thick, but the vessels show up clearly through it. Often you can see arterioles and venules running in parallel. The arteriole looks thinner because only the blood column is visible, compressed between its thick walls.